All right, so your first instinct is probably to rip open a text file and start writing some code. And that would probably be wrong. One of the things you want to do when you're starting a new project is to figure out what specifically you want for the prototype. The prototype is going to be the, the first phase of development. It's a quick kind of proof of concept just to like let you kind of figure out what's what this thing might really look like when you build it. So the prototype has to kind of accomplish one basic task, maybe the core basic task of your program. What a lot of people do is they rip open a text file and start writing code. That's just like something that they know how to do that they think is going to be part of this project. That's a great way to get yourself kind of like into a lot of lines of code that don't actually help you solve the problem and that just make things more confusing and complex to deal with later. So the first thing you want to do is actually stop and look at the problem you're trying to solve. In our case, it's fairly simple and straightforward. It is, we've got a website and we want to scrape that website. That means we want our program to make HTTP requests to it, just like a browser. And then we want to grab some data from the responses that this website sends us. So right now we're looking at the uh, Humble Bundle Cloud Computing Books Bundle. This is what we want to scrape. So we have a URL that brings us to what we want to scrape. Now eventually we want to scrape all bundles, but that's going to be kind of a separate part of our program. Right now we just want to do a proof of concept, a basic script that makes a request to the site, grabs and parses the response. What I'm thinking here for the uh, prototype is like we basically have it separate these into tiers so it'll be like the one dollar tier contains these books the eight dollar tier so we'll split it into tiers and then list all of the products that each tier has so I'm gonna go to my code directory and I'm gonna create um, a new directory just for this project and we'll call it bundle scraper and so I've opened this directory in my text editor. It doesn't really matter what you use as long as you're comfortable with it. I'm using Sublime Text here. So the first thing I'm going to do, as in any Python script, is say user bin env python. And that means that if this script is marked as executable, Linux will know to use uh, whatever this environment's Python is to run it. Um, I'm actually going to change that to Python 3, but right now we'll just name it bundlescraper.py. Okay, so we've got our, well, the very beginning of a script, and just if you're a beginner, make sure everything's working, you can write a little hello world, save that, and we'll just kind of get this to executable bundlescraper.py, and now we can run bundlescraper.py, and you can see it prints out hello world. So we basically have an end-to-end -end program that works, our environment basically works, and now we can start developing. Now the first thing I like to do is set up a virtual env. Now I've made a whole video on this so I'm not going to cover it here in detail but I will show you basically exactly what how I'm going to set that up. So first I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it requirements.txt and this is where we'll list all of the uh, Python packages that we need, all the libraries or modules that we're going to be like installing just for this project. What I'm going to do now is go back to my shell and create a virtual environment for this project. So we'll say virtual env. Um, you'll need to install the python dash virtual env package for this. But you'll say virtual env, the python is going to be python 3, and then we'll say venv. And that's going to create a new virtual environment, which is just a directory that's filled with all the binaries and stuff that we need to um, kind of develop without messing up our system, keeping everything, all of our dependencies, all of our stuff contained in this directory. Again, just check out the virtual end video um, for more information. But we can basically activate this by saying source, nope, uh, vn bin activate. And you'll see that our prompt kind of changes. And we have this little VN thing here, which just means we are in the VN virtual environment. You can name this whatever you want. So like here, you could just say, you know, the name of your project or something. To get out of this, you can just close the shell or uh, I think type deactivate. Yep, so now we're back out. And what that does is, again, this is in the other video, but I'm just gonna show you very quickly. When we've activate, activated this, you can see that instead of using system dependencies now, 
we're using the dependencies that we have locally in this VN. So like a new Python binary has been installed here. Um, likewise, all of our packages that we install will be accessible just in this virtual environment so they don't clutter up our system and that we don't have like dependency conflicts, like version conflicts between different projects that we're developing. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say about VMs. Check out the other video for more details, but this is all you need to know for right now. Okay, we have a virtual env. Now here's what we actually need to do. We need to scrape this thing. So here's our first line of code, are you ready? This is our URL. This is what we're gonna scrape. So we are literally gonna do this in the simplest format possible. And we're gonna enter this string here, which is just the URL we want to scrape. And then we need to scrape it. So we actually need to make an HTTP request and then inspect the result of that. So as always, I'm gonna open a shell next to me and get into the REPL so I can kind of experiment along with, uh, with what I'm doing. And here I need to go into code bundle scraper, and then I need to do that source blah 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 thing. So I'm using the same Python version that my script is going to use. And here I am. So the first thing I need to do is uh, the library we're going to use for this is called requests. So if you search for Python requests, you'll be brought to the documentation for Python. It's an HTTP library that kind of gives you a really nice and simple interface or abstraction for dealing with HTTP. So this is one of the ingredients we're gonna use so that we don't have to do uh, more low level stuff or, or anything really more complex ourselves. And you can see that what we really wanna do is make a get request. That's the HTTP request that asks for a resource. Uh, in this case, this web page. So you can literally grab this. We don't need the auth user pass thing. Uh, it's just there if you do need it. And you can see we can start inspecting that um, as soon as uh, that request has been made. So why don't we play with that? So instead of, we don't need this, and we're actually just gonna pass the URL here, right? So this is our string. Uh, and why don't we do this in the REPL? So I'll paste both these things in. And here's our first error, requests is not defined. So we need to import requests. If you haven't installed requests yet, Here's how you do that. You could just say pip install requests, but then you're not really tracking this in any way. So like getting back to a state where you can run this program is gonna be a little weird. So here, you're just gonna say requests. You don't really care which version we have. You can also specify that in requirements text. But now what we can do is because we have this requ uh, requirements file that just says requests, which is the library we want, we can say pip install dash r requirements.txt and then pip will go out grab every package in there and uh, install it build it whatever it needs to do some packages will require um, that you have like build essentials installed which is just like a c compiler um, header libraries and like various other things uh, if you run into errors usually one quick google will tell you exactly what you need to install to be able to build that stuff um, okay so now we can go back to python and now we can import requests, right? So this is the library we need. And we'll do that in here too. Import requests. And now we can paste these things in here again. Now it's taking a while. Did you see that? It just blocked before returning. And that's because this is actually going out and making an HTTP request. So if we say R, we can see that this is sort of the string representation of this object that has been returned to us. It's a response object. But that's actually full of information. One cheap and easy way to inspect an object is to do this magic underscore underscore dict underscore underscore method. And that'll kind of turn the thing into a dictionary, which in this case is not all that useful because it's you can see this is the HTML uh, and JavaScript, it looks like. So this is like everything this object contains. And part of that is the markup. And where's the beginning of this object? Okay, so you can see it also contains some other information. Um, so this is a Python dictionary now. You can see how long the request took, content consumed, all this stuff. I have no idea what half of this means. But you can see this is some very HTTP-like stuff, which you could read out of this object if you wanted. 
uh, the cross-site request forgery cookie, blah, blah, blah. But what we really just care about is the status, which is helpfully printed here, and uh, the actual markup. So if we stay our status code, that gives us the integer 200. Uh, now, how do I know to do that? Well, it's because I read the docs. So you can see that our status code is a thing that you can ask this object. This is why reading the documentation is so important. Don't waste time just like not reading docs and then just Googling for every single thing you want to do and looking on Stack Overflow. Spend a few minutes reading the documentation. I've worked with requests a whole bunch, so um, it's sort of the basics are second nature to me now. But if you're doing this for the first time, read through this, read through the quick start. Look at some of the um, some of the features that it offers so that you get an idea of how you can use this library. Okay, I know you're not going to listen to me, but after you waste a lot of time, you will listen to me and you'll say, Dave was right, I was wrong, and I'm so sorry, you're going to leave a comment below, I've wasted tens or hundreds of hours, and now I finally have learned to read the docs first, so that I don't look like a big dumb idiot to everyone on the internet when I ask questions that are answered on the second page of the documentation. Whew, just got emotional there for a second, sorry guys. Something, something about having wasted hundreds of hours of my own time <laughs> rubbed me the wrong way when I talk about it. Okay. So, uh, we don't really care about this stuff, but what we do care about is the actual markup. So let's try r.text. Let's see if that's what we want. So we'll say r.text, and that is definitely looking like what we want. So this is actual the, the markup. This is the HTML document that we've actually gotten back from the server. So that is excellent. Um, that's actually one of the first things we want. So now we have this HTML that doesn't actually do us all that much good because we have to like look through here for all the uh, product names and whatever. Like how do we actually do that? Well, that's a process called parsing. We're gonna take this and we're gonna take a Python module that understands XML or HTML. HTML is a kind of XML. And we're going to parse this into a Python data structure that we can work with. Right now, this is just like a string, right? It's sort of flat. Um, you can't ask this string, hey, please give me like the third div that you've got. Or please give me like the fifth line item in the section of products. Right now, it's just a string. Python has no idea what to do this except like string-like things. It's just a blob of binary stuff. Now what we want to do is parse this. So we are going to use a library called Beautiful Soup. The package is called BS4. It's Beautiful Soup 4. So we're going to do the same thing again, where we pip install our requirements text. Now it already knows that we've got the first one, requirement already satisfi satisfied requests, but you can see that it's installing Beautiful Soup now, and it's successfully done that. Again, if you have run into issues here, just Google, read the docs. Again, beautiful soup Python. Also, if you just search for like HTML parsing, like that will lead you eventually to beautiful soup. Um, this beautiful soup three, this might actually be the wrong one. Beautiful soup four, beautiful soup documentation. Okay, this looks more like it. We've got yet another quick start here. Obviously, programmers are clearly uh, can't be trusted to read documentation, so there's quick starts on the first page, on the landing page of like every single package you're going to use. So you can see that they have, just as an example, an HTML document, which actually looks a lot like our response.txt. And let's see how they actually use this. So they import beautiful soup from this package we just installed, and then they are capturing something in a variable, and that's the beautiful soupized they're just using this as a function, HTML doc, and it looks like HTML parser. So you're telling it that you want to use the HTML parser, which kind of implies that it can do other types of, of markup. So as any good programmer knows, we're going to steal this, and we're going to stick it right in our program. So we're doing this, and this has to come after. So we've got our request. Um, you know, this is getting a little ugly. I'm going to gonna move this over to 8. Um, so now we're going to have our kind of exploration environment over here. So I'm going to do this again. Go back to my program. There we go. A little more, a little more room for you to see. Uh, and paste this at the bottom. So HTML doc is not defined. 
if you remember what we wanted was our text. So we're just going to call this resp just to make it a little longer and then we're going to say resp text is actually the the thing that we want. Um, you could tack text onto the end of this dot text to grab just that but then you kind of lose everything else that it got in case we want to use that later. You could create a new variable also and just say you know resp uh, or, or markup equals resp text and then just use markup in here. I leave that up to you, but this is just how I'm doing it uh, quickly. We're going to run the HTML parser on this and just see where that gets us. So we're going to do all this again, paste it into our REPL, and you can see it's fetching the HTML page, and soup has been assigned, so that's already been parsed. Let's like look at what this is. Okay, this is actually looking a little bit better. As you can tell, it's not just one crazy string. It looks like it's somehow been formatted. And, well, we know it's been parsed. There we go. So I'm going to inspect this object in a second. But it just, oh my. Oh my. So much data. Wow. I, don't, I think this might blow our scroll back buffer. No. Okay, I found the beginning. So soup just poops out all of this information. Uh, so this is like the stringified object. Basically, when you type something in in the REPL, Python will basically take the string representation, which the developer of Beautiful Soup has decided is the a, a nice, nicely formatted representation of the parsed HTML. So let's see what we can do with this object. How do we do that? We read the docs. Correct. That's what you said, right? Read the docs. Always read the docs. Okay. So it looks like if we just do soup, it actually does this for us. We don't really need to do this because we're not, we don't really care about printing this out. So we've got it parsed and now we need to work with it. So let's see what we can do. Um, it looks like parsing this lets us access different parts of the markup so that if you know HTML, you can access different parts of the HTML markup by using things that this, like this object has stored them in certain attributes. So we can say soup title. Let's see what our title is. Looks good to me. Let's see uh, what paragraphs there are here. P, lovely, beautiful. And now we're getting into the territory that actually looks interesting for our product. Now, it's totally normal to have to keep reminding yourself of what you're doing because it's easy to get caught into like, oh, the features of this library are this, and you start playing around, and you kind of forget like what you came for in the first place. So especially when you're building a prototype, stay focused on the actual thing you want to accomplish. So before we get into this, we need to figure out what we actually want to collect. For that, we go back to the web page. So this is what we just scraped. What we want is for some way to identify the tiers, like pay $1 or more, pay $8 or more, blah, 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 and then the products. So let's just see how we can do that. One of the really useful tools is right click on any element and then choose inspect element in um, I think all the major browsers have this. I use Firefox because it gave freedom. And then just inspect the element. So right click on the thing you're curious about and it will be highlighted in this representation of the DOM, the document object model. So you can see that you can inspect each of these. You can open or close them just like sort of code hiding in your editor. And it looks like this class that we want is DD header headline. Remember that for now. Uh, we can copy this out. And let's see if the second thing is also DD header headline. Yeah, it looks like looks like these are all DD header headlines. So it looks like the element we want has a class of DD header headline. If you are totally new to HTML, just like try to follow along. You don't need to like perfectly understand it, but basically um, HTML is made up of elements. Elements can have IDs or classes. Classes are used for they're often used for styling for markup and for like semantic kind of uh, ordering of this like information hierarchy that is HTML. Just kind of open your mind, follow along. These are basically tags that we can search this document by, right? So if we search for everything that has a class of this, every element that has this class assigned to it, like h2 class blah, will show up. There can be h2s that have a different class. There could be h2s that don't have a class added to them at all. Those won't show up in our search. So for now, just kind of 
stick with me and you'll kind of figure out how this works. If you want to understand more about how HTML works, it's really simple. You can kind of learn the basics, just about everything you need in an hour or two. I recommend you do that at some point, but it's not, it's not that important that you're an HTML expert right now. Okay, so let's just like mark this down that we're probably, uh, we'll say bundle uh, tiers. And that'll, that'll rem remind us that uh, each tier seems to have its like headline or the name and the price stored in this DD header headline class. Classes are basically accessed through this dot notation um, in things like, uh, well, in JavaScript. So how do we actually access that element that we want? Let's just like test to see if this is what we want. We think we know. So we've got the soup find all, um, and that actually looks like it's something we might want to try. So we're going to paste this in here, and instead of A, we're going to say we want the class DD header headline. Let's just see if this is what we want. This is not working for us. Uh, I wonder if it is, what, what was it, an H2? Okay, yeah, so it's close. It doesn't look like this method actually does what we want, right? So the find all thing seems to be a, a tag, an element a type. So this can let us find all the uh, heading twos, but it returns a list of things that maybe, well, this is close. This might be useful. Um, why don't we call this testy, and then we'll say testy, what's the first element? This could work for us. But I've also found this select method, which it looks like we can get classes specifically. And that's kind of what we want, because this looks like we could work with it for now, but if, if something else, if there's another H2 on this page ever, this will break our code, because we're not narrowing down by the class we want, this is just any heading twos. To make this a little bit less brittle, and like scraping web pages is always brittle, because people change their websites and then stuff breaks, and you have to fix it and figure out what they changed. Um, so there's a bit of that reverse engineering. Why don't we try using that select uh, on the thing that we want, DD header headline. So let's do soup select, and we'll do, well, let's try just the class, in case they change it from an H2 to something else. Now this basically looks like the same thing, but it's gonna be a little bit better because it only grabs elements regardless of which tag they are, whether they're an H2 or a paragraph, doesn't matter. Um, and let's try test it here get the first element again and it's basically still the same thing so that's great so we're gonna use this select thing and we're gonna say we want the text of this element and it's a list so I'm a dumb dumb so we'll say testy zero text so an actual element so that's looking realistic um, this is the text without the tags around it what we actually want to do here is Oops, not stip, but we want to strip uh, white space from around it. And now this is looking like we want. So this is actually one of the th one of the pieces of information that we want. So now we got to figure out how we got this again. So it's this, and then for each of those elements, we're going to grab the text and strip the white space off of it. If that doesn't make sense, pause the video and just like look over what we've done here and um, you'll see it in the code in just a second. So we'll say soup select, we're gonna capture this in, uh, we'll say tier headlines, I guess. Naming things is hard, and like you can definitely change the name of these things if, you, if they turn out to be something else. So then we've got this list, if you remember, this is a list object, um, looks like this, and it contains all these elements that are actually the ones we want. So what we'll do is, uh, uh, we'll, we'll do like a for loop for tier and tier headlines. Uh, what did we do to it? We stripped it. Um, we got the text and then stripped that text, and that gave us what we wanted. So don't be afraid to copy and paste here, kids. We'll say, uh, we'll, we'll just print this out for now, okay? So we'll say uh, print 
the stripped text of this tier. Okay, so this will be the element. This will be each one of those H2s in here, like this. Uh, so that'll be like one of these. And then we're going to print the stripped text of that, like here. Let's try this in our REPL. Let's see if it kind of does what we want. So this is really just the Pythonicized version of what we did. Okay, this actually looks great, except we've got one one straggler in here, support charity. Um, that's annoying. I wonder if this is not an H2. Let's see. Yeah, I totally missed that last H2. Whoops, my bad. Uh, okay, so why don't we do for tier, tier headlines, why don't we only select H2s? I wonder if this is not an H2. Print tier text strip. Oops. Oh. And then we'll do the four tier and tier headlines. Nope, it's still in there. Huh. Support charity. This is fucking annoying. Let's inspect it. Damn, it is definitely a DD header headline in a DD header thing. Is there is there anything that makes this different from the others? Because then we can use that to like isolate the others. Main content. I wonder if it's not in the main content. Oh, I see. So it's like three of these main content divs stacked on top of each other. Huh. Is this one? Main content. Damn, it is a main content one too. So I am gonna leave this for now. Let's just see how it affects us. Um, and we can we can worry about it later. I don't want to get hyper specific by like only accessing let's say one um, to three. I just wanna let's just see what this gives us. We can figure out a way to get rid of it later once we have a better idea of what this program is gonna look like. A couple of rough edges are fine in a prototype um, as long as you kind of keep track of them. So in the readme we're gonna say I like to put the to dos at the top. We're capturing support charity as a title by mistake. Just just so we like know that this is a trade-off we're making. So this is sort of, kind of, ish good enough for right now. We have these things, uh, and we can print them out, and we can get rid of this, this last one later. We'll figure it out. At this point, we need to kind of ask ourselves, uh, what specifically we're trying to achieve like we we understand that we can access this data now it's actually like possible for us and so let's actually design kind of the data structure we want and we can do this right in the uh in here we'll just do it uh as some comments uh, or i can just comment it afterwards so the data that we actually kind of want like what's what's the goal so we've established that we connect we can parse the the response, we can access stuff in there. But what's like success for this prototype actually gonna look like? Well, what I think we want just for the first phase of this project is a data structure that kind of looks like, uh, I'm not gonna tie it to a specific data structure yet because I want you to guess at the data structures in Python that we might use for this. Some kind of collection that for each of these tiers has the tier name uh, and, and price. And then for for each of those tiers, it'll have you know like product one, product two, etc. And then like the same thing for tier two, right? So this is kind of what we want. Now, which Python data structures would actually map to this? Well, a list. This is definitely a list of things, right? It's you've got tier one, tier two. Could it be a dictionary? Do we want these as keys that are then looked up? I think that's not a bad idea. Tiers equals a dictionary. And then it would be like tier one. And then you'll say, uh, we really just want name, price, and products. So I guess we'll say price will be, you know, like, I don't know, some number of cents. Right, so we'll say 500 cents. I suppose we'll do a list of products. Right, this will be a list, and that list might contain product objects. We really just care about the names, right? 
So that should be fine. So this would be like name one. Um, so let's think about this data structure for a second, right? How do we like, what are the common operations that we're gonna wanna run against this data structure? Are they easy to do? Are they intuitive? Are they efficient? Are they gonna prevent us making silly bugs because this is like weird and complicated to access? So let's think about it. Um, let's make another tier, just like, because we're gonna have multiple tiers. Uh, we'll name this tier two, and this should be fine. So, why don't we paste this into our REPL? And do we name this something? Yeah, tiers. Okay. Tiers. Okay, we've got our tiers data structure. Am I missing a? Uh, yeah. Okay. So now we've got our tier tiers data structure. Let's try accessing some things. So what are we going to want to do? We are going to uh, want to get a list of tiers, and that would be tiers keys. So then we could do like. Um, we'll just say key for key in tiers keys. Uh, that is kind of not what we wanted at all. This is wrong. I pasted this in wrong. Uh, so tiers, where does this close? I forgot to close a tier, didn't I? Didn't I? Correct. So I'm closing tier one here, opening tier two here, and then closing the whole data structure. Okay. My bad. Let's try this again. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> ah, Python. There we go. Okay, let's try this again. Tiers. This looks correct. Now we have tier one mapped not to tier two, but to a price. Okay, so let's try it again. Tiers, keys. There we go. So here are the two key, uh, keys that I want. And if we want to make like a list uh, from that, we could do, uh, if you're not comfortable with list comprehensions, it's one of the most powerful tools you have in Python. It's basically making a list from some other operation. So you basically, um, you can use it a lot like collect functions in, in functional languages. Um, it's really powerful, but it's still really intuitive because it just kind of maps to how we linguistically think about this thing. So I want each key for each key in just print the key without doing anything to it. You could do some other operations on this, for example, for each key in tiers keys, which is just some iterable that we can iterate over and like collect stuff out of. Um, if you wanted to see how, like, um, is it upcase? God damn it. <laughs> Uh, up case, down case, uh, upper, oh, come on, Dave, remember basic Python, upper, it's upper, isn't it? Yes, okay, so, for example, if I wanted to modify this, I could do some operation, whether running a function on the key, uh, accessing some attribute of the key, whatever, that key can be whatever name you want, for key in tiers key, so this is a for loop, and then you're doing something for that, uh, for each one, and then this returns a new collection that has the modified thing without actually like modifying tiers keys. Let me show you how you might actually use that. It's a little bit of a brain fuck the first couple of times, but it's super useful and you use it all the time in Python. So like this three line thing, you know, it's fine. It's probably good for readability, but we could actually replace the entire thing with one list comprehension. So what we could do is, well, I'll just show you right under it. We'll say uh, stripped tier names equals, and then we'll do our list comprehension. Tier text strip, the thing we're going to do to it, to each one, for tier in tier headlines. Uh, I think we still have this in our loaded up in our REPL, so let's try it. So you can see that this actually has done all of that work of the for loop for us. So it's just like a kind of occasionally a tighter and more intuitive way to write something that you're, you might use a for loop for. It's still a for loop. It's still essentially doing the same thing, but it's just in some cases a lot more readable. And that's, that's really the test of when to use this. Is it more readable? Uh, occasionally, is it more performant? If the answer is no, then don't use this. Don't just use this to be cool, clever, or save a couple lines of code. That's almost never worth it. 
Like, no one's charging you by the line. Well, if you're charging by the line, <laughs> you got to have a chat with your employer. But um, uh, I hope that kind of explains, right? So this is equivalent uh, to this, except that it's not. This isn't printing it out. Um, so really, the equivalent of this would be even even bulkier. So this would be like new tiers Oops. will be, this is your empty list that you're initializing. And then you'd say new tiers append each of these things as you go through them, right? Just to show you that that's equivalent. For tier and tier headlines, new tiers append, but ah, Jesus. New tiers is an empty list. So you initialize the list for tier and tier headlines, new tiers append, right? So these three lines really are the same thing as that one line. New tiers is this, and stripped tier names is the same thing. Make sense? Uh, I just wanted to show you, it's a really, really powerful tool. Um, and in this case, we can actually use it and have it be really readable. You can see, oh, we're just going through the tier headlines. We're getting the text and then stripping the white space for each of those things. If you wanted to get even crazier, and this is where I start saying readability is affected. This is just this statement right here. So you could actually reduce this entire chunk of code to this right here. My stripped tier names, what we can really just rename to tier headlines, because that's what we're actually talking about, is a list of each item that is returned by this function, stripped, uh, the text of that item, and stripped. You understand how powerful this can be? It's like so many things can be happening, but that's also the downside. So again, if it makes things more readable, more debuggable in the future, uh, then I recommend you use it. If it doesn't, then maybe you don't want to use it. Make sense? Okay, so I'm actually going to leave this in two parts because, you know, I just, I feel like we're just getting started on our beautiful Python journey and I, uh, I don't, don't want you to get confused the next time you look at this. So I'm going to replace this back out. We're going to split this again across two lines. It's still better than four or five. And now you have the very basics of how Python list comprehensions work. I hope that's been useful. Um, okay, so what are we actually doing with this thing? Well, we have a data structure here. Uh, let's make sure I still have it in here. Tiers. Wow, a little bit of a, a learning detour, but I mean, that's the way to learn when it's actually in front of you and it can be useful. So let's talk about how we want to access this. We definitely want to be able to list the tiers and then we want to be able to say, um, for tier in actually what we'll, we'll say is um, for tier name and then like tier info in tiers enumerate and what this will do it's a Python function that will go through and for each key value pair it'll assign the key and the value for each uh, so that you have access to both so you can do something like for tier name tier info in tiers enumerate, we are going to, uh, we'll just print tier name. And then we'll print um, uh, the name of each product. We'll say priced at, we'll do the price. And then we'll say tier info price. Because now we're talking about the value. So this is our value this is a little bit like iterating over a dictionary. The first couple times you do it, it's a little weird. Just always imagine which thing are we talking about. So like tiers is obviously the whole data structure. For each key value pair in this set, okay, so now we're talking about a uh, key value pair. It's got a name, so that's the first bit here. This is what's going to print down. And it's got a value, which is this chunk, right? The key and the value. And so now tier info is assigned to this, right? That's just how this works. I know it's a little confusing at first, but just stay with me. You'll see this kind of working and it'll become intuitive as you see it over and over. So 
what we want is the price. So we're accessing it's just another dictionary access, tier info price. And then we'll get a list of the products, right? Uh, this looks good. One, two, three, four. And then we'll say print products. And we'll just sort of like announce that they're coming. And then what we can do is another, this is like <laughs> super basic just to show you. And then we'll, we'll print each product. Maybe we'll join those together into, uh, into like a single string. So we can do a uh, comma join. So this is a string join of tier info Ooh, products products, and that should get us kind of what we what we want. Uh, and maybe for uh, just some like visual distance, we'll just print a couple new lines after each one, just so we get some space. Let's see if this works. And we have invalid syntax. Whatever, I'm actually gonna bring this over here and then we can just copy and paste nicely. So let's see. Uh, all of these are gonna get replaced with a single tab. Uh, for tier name, tier info, print tier name. You guys are probably seeing the bug and I'm not, which is probably super frustrating for you. Yeah, it's definitely like I'm missing a... Oh, damn it. There it is. Sorry about that, guys. You must have been freaking out if you've seen that. Um, okay, so just a missing paren. Okay. Huh. Enumerate. What? Totally thought this was a Python. Python dictionary. Enumerate? Why is that not a thing? Enumerate for iterating on... Ah, items. I'm so sorry. Enumerate. <laughs> Python noob alert. I've only been doing this for <laughs> nine years. Uh, enumerate is actually something we use on lists, not dictionaries. What we actually want is items. In Python 2, this was called iter items. Just for clarity, I'm pasting the, uh, the data structure here again. And now we're going to iterate through it. Whew. Yikes, sorry about that. Uh, so this is the output we want. We have the tier name priced at blah, and the products are name one, name two, then we've got some new lines, and then we start again for the next product. I think that's that's reasonable output for what we want. So we're gonna say this data structure works. There's certainly other ways to do that. You could make this a list, and then you could uh, make it a list of dictionaries, for example. But I like this. Uh, we're gonna use this data structure. So I'm gonna, basically comment this out and just leave it here for reference to store bundle info. And if we need to change that, uh, if we like realize that there's some something that we want to access and use and store um, from the markup that like this doesn't really support, we can just like redesign the data structure, change all the places where we access it and uh, continue on our merry way. Uh, I'm gonna comment this out. This is gonna be just like, we'll name this uh, a common access pattern, for example. Okay, so now really all we need to do is we have our tier names, right? So that's gonna be this bit. Now we need the price and the product list. So the price is in here, actually. Let's take a look at where the products are and then we can work on extracting the price. So here is, I'm just gonna, well, Let's inspect one of the products. Okay, now we're gonna hover until we see the whole thing. There we go, okay. DD image box list. Just gonna keep this class name and let's see if the other products are in one of these two. Cause I think that might be what we want. Yep, okay, so it looks like each product box is has a class of DD image box list. And then the thing we want in there, like an actual product, DD image holder, that looks good. Just go for the DD image holder. Oh, I guess it's not the image, sorry. Uh, I guess it's the text we want. Right, there we go. So it's the DD image box caption, DD image box text, interesting. Call out subtitle. I don't think we care about the subtitle right now. DD image box caption. That looks like a contender. Okay. 
so we'll say product names. Uh, let's do a soup select for that. Uh, DD image box caption. Let's just see what that gives us. I'm just going to do this again for uh, for ease of reading. We'll say soup select this and okay, that's a bunch. Okay, but that is a bunch of products. This actually looks good. Interesting. Okay, this actually looks like what we want. DD image box caption. So why don't we capture that and just um, call it testy again, and we'll say text testy zero and just. Yes, this looks good. So like, again, this text attribute is what we want. And then again, we want to strip it. So this is the same process as before. Um, let's just make sure this works with the last element too. We don't have like something weird in here um, that we accidentally matched and it looks good. It actually looks really good. Okay, so how do we assign testy again? Soup select DD image box caption. Perfect. So we'll say uh, product underscore names. That's this, and we'll kind of use the same the same thing that we used up here, the same kind of structure. So we'll say uh, stripped product names. Oof, these are getting a little long, these variables, but that's okay. Uh, and we'll just say prod name text strip for prod name in, and it's not tier headlines, it's product names. So let's try this out and see if this is what we want. Product names, stripped product names. Let's see. Yeah, that looks good. That's what we want. So like, let's just pick a random one. The sixth one, Cloud Native Python. Ooh. Uh, cool. Okay, so we have kind of the data structures that we want. Um, product names, um, so that's this. And the last thing we need to do is to grab the price. Let's... Uh, Let's think about grabbing the price for each tier. So if you remember, our stripped tier names actually include the price. So it looks like every single one of them starts with pay. Those are the ones we actually want to match. We're gonna have to clean this up a little bit, right? So this is where we have to deal with the support charity problem. Um, let's, let's just do a kind of ugly ugly attempt at this. We will say name for name in stripped tier names if name and what we want is we want to make sure that it starts with uh, pay. Python has a starts with uh, function which is super useful. So if name starts with Pay. So that will um, that will just grab the um, the ones we want. Support charity doesn't start with pay. But what we actually want is we want to split this out for the price. So we're gonna split, which by default splits on uh, a space, and then we want the zero first element of that. So what I'm doing is it's going to split on every space and make a new list. Of that list we want the zeroth first element and we kind of kind of want to remove the, um, the dollar sign but it doesn't really matter. Uh, we'll just leave it as a string for right now. There we go. So you can see that what we've actually got is if we do name split and then grab the first, or the sorry, the second element, the first index, the oneth index, yikes, for each name in these stripped tier names, as long as that starts with pay, then we actually get the list that we want. I think this is a little bit ugly. I, I don't think this is actually a great solution, um, but it gets us a little bit closer. So I think what we'll do is we'll definitely have to iterate through this and like split this as long as it starts with this. In fact, I think what we'll do is we'll solve this as part of the next step. We're gonna build this data structure and we'll kind of do it as part of that. So we have our tier headlines. We've got our 
product names. I wonder if this will help us. Why don't we try DD game row? So I'm going to try a little experiment here. See if this targeting gets us a little bit closer. Let's look at what we get from accessing DD game row. So this is a little bit ugly, but it might actually let us um, target specifically what we want because we're going to grab this by row. And then so for each row, we'll just be able to pull out the title and then the products for that thing so that we don't have to um, hope that we like scrape them all in the right order. Not that that would probably be an issue, but you see here we're kind of doing this separately. Like we're basically selecting to different things and then just hoping that the order of the list this gives us matches and there's no real reason why it wouldn't be but I like this method a little more so we're gonna select DD game row instead of DD header headline we're still gonna do this uh, text strip thing but now we're gonna build this data structure and we're gonna do that in a loop uh, instead of tier headlines we're just gonna call this tiers and then we'll say for tier and tiers If it has one of these, just so we don't like accidentally match something weird, if this is not, if this doesn't come back empty, we are going to grab, we're going to do this, this text strip thing uh, for this. If it has it, then we're going to say to your name is this. So now we're back to working with that same headline that we were that we were using here. I'm going to start here by initializing the tier data structure. Uh, how about tier dict to an empty dictionary and then we can use this. Tier name is that. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna set this. So tier dict tier name will be uh, and then the, the actual tier data structure which we don't have yet so so now we need to do the products Let's do some comments here only for a headline grab tier name and price and now we're gonna have to grab tier product names right so here's where like the the product thing will go Uh, this is not, I'm just showing you what I'm going to do here. So we're going to grab the tier product names by, uh, what do we do? Image box caption, but not on the whole soup thing, but just on this tier that we're working with. So instead of getting all DD image box captions on the page, we're going to get just those that match inside of this thing we've already selected. So this is us filtering down more and more. So these will be our products. Uh, I guess we should name it product names and then we should make sure it's product names so we will select the image box caption just as we did but now instead of selecting everything in the whole document we're just selecting the ones inside of this original um, game row and we can still use this um, so we can actually just do uh, tier headlines where is it prod name text stripped for prod name in product names. We'll reuse this to get all the stripped product names. Uh, we, we can actually just reassign this. Product names. So we're just reassigning it to a cleaned up version of all of these product names. And now we can actually build our data structure. So this is a key value pair, but what we're really going to say is uh, product tier to our data structure. So this tier dict, which is presumably empty at this point. We're going to give the tier name, use the tier name as the key, which is the stripped name of this tier. And then we're going to add the products here, but those are actually the product names. So this will be a dictionary again. Products. Products. We'll say product names. Okay, uh, I suppose we could do this on one line. It's still 
nice and readable. So this is like one element in this list. Did I? Products and price. Ah, uh, that's right. You know what? We'll worry about the price later. Um, we can do all that fancy stripping and splitting stuff. I just don't want to get too like down the rabbit hole right now. Okay, so we'll have products, product names. Let's let's run this. Uh, I'm just gonna remove the white space here because otherwise the REPL is gonna throw up. So, oh, <laughs> of course, we've changed this. So tiers is now this different selection. There are three game rows. And then for each one of those, we're going to drill down, parse out the separate information, and list object has no attribute text. Interesting. Line five. Two, three, four, five. Text is strip. That's okay. Um, so we're going to simulate this. So for tier and tiers, we're going to simulate uh, testy again. Will be tiers zero. So testy is one of these tiers. We're going to do all these operations on them. Does this have a headline element? Uh, tier is going to be testy. Yes. So it has one of these headlines. So it is one of the ones we're going to use. So let's do testy select this thing. I think that's where the error was. Testy select. Boom. Let's see what we get when we select it. Ah, this is a, a list element. It'll only have one, so it'll that will always be the zeroth element, and that's the one that we pick out and strip the text from. Does that make sense? So this returns a list um, because there could be more than one H2 GD header headline in here, but we know there won't be because we're already drilling down into a single uh, sort of product stripe here, right? This is the element we're dealing with, no longer the whole page. We've already split the tiers, which are each section like this, and now we're just searching inside of the markup that makes up this chunk of the page. Okay, um, so where was that? Here, tier select, and then we're gonna grab the first header headline that we find, the only one, strip the text from it, and there we go. Again, this will be this will be a list that's returned. So we'll select again the image box, caption, and then for each of those, uh, we do this text strip thing. So we are iterating over those, grabbing each element out, and assigning it back to product name. So this will start as this kind of dirty list and then become a clean list as we iterate over it, grab the text, strip the white space, and then assign it back to product names, right? Then we create the data structure. So why don't we create tier dict? This will be our kind of like final test of this if we don't have any more bugs and see what happens. Okay, so this worked well, didn't have any obvious bugs anyway. Let's look at tier dict. This is actually looking like what we want. So let's test it out. We'll say tier dict uh, keys, right? So that's our access pattern that we saved before. And it looks like, yeah, these are actually the pay blah or more to unlock. That's pretty exciting. What was our access pattern again? Uh, common access pattern for tier name, tier info in tiers items. Instead of tiers, we're calling it tier dict. Why don't we uncomment this and see if it kind of does what we expect. Oof. Price. Ah, right, we didn't set price. That, that's totally fine. Um, we will just remove that and run the rest. Come on, baby. All right. Yeah. So this is basically what we wanted. I think we have what we need. So I'm going to, I'll just uncomment this and leave it at the bottom just for reference. Like in, in a normal, in an actual program that I was writing, I would uh, like cut all the stuff that I'm not using out. But because I'm gonna push this up to GitHub and you guys can clone it and take a look at it, I want you to have at least the reference of the stuff uh, that we worked on and cut. Okay, so 
why don't we actually try running this as a program now that we've basically done all of our REPL work we've kind of tested each chunk of this let's make sure that this actually works so we are going to run Python bundle scraper dot pi and let's see what happens boom beautiful okay this is a pretty good prototype this is it's very basic I mean you can see by the time we're done I mean, we spent like an hour two hours on this we, we're really we've got a working product in approximately 10 lines of code right and the hardest part of this was just figuring out it's not that the programming is so complicated or complex the hardest part of this was like figuring out how to target the content we want how to get at the information that we want and that's pretty representative of scraping data munging finding out how to get the data dealing with rate limiting cleaning the data accessing the data reliably building it in a way that isn't going to break as soon as something small gets updated on the website those are the things that are actually difficult and as you saw they're the things that are the most time consuming if you've never built anything then you think the hard part is like oh like all these programming constructs of the language but in reality for most programs you're going to write the programming bit itself is simple the things that are hard are like you saw picking getting the right information thinking about the problem correctly building an appropriate data structure thinking ahead about what you actually want to see what you actually want to do and that's why you know doing this in a project-based way is so much more helpful than just like reading a python book or doing a python course even though that's naturally what you think of when you're like oh i want to learn to program it's like no you don't you really want to learn how to build useful tools uh, learning programming is just like a thing that you have to do on the way to that and it's actually not even the, the most difficult or, or even the most interesting for most people part of that journey so what i'm really hoping for is that this kind of ties things together in your head so that you can see that there's no magic at any step and that none of it is in isolation is particularly difficult it's really just about keeping a clear idea of what you want staying open to changing your mind or changing how you've implemented something for it to be better and then getting to a working prototype as quickly as possible and then building on that I hope that's been fun. I hope that's been helpful. If you're enjoying this, definitely let me know in the comments. And uh, based on the feedback, I'll do more of these and we'll, we'll kind of build this up into something more complex. So I hope you've been typing along and experimenting. And uh, I'll see you in the next section for this, the next phase, the next video. See you there. Peace.